What's up YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is a super fun one. Today we're hanging out with my buddy Taylor Barefoot. Taylor's a really good friend of mine here in the LA area. He's also a multi-instrumentalist, producer and engineer who has been working with Drew Berlin of Burst Brothers fame for over seven years now as a vintage guitar appraiser and broker. Now, as many of you know, or may not know, Drew Berlin was a very close friend of the late, great Howard Alexander Dumble. And by working with Drew, this gave Taylor a ringside seat into the extraordinary private world of the late Tone Chaperone before and since his unfortunate passing. So with all that being said, all of Taylor's links will be in the description below, as well as links for Drew Berlin. Enjoy today's video. all that clarity you get you know for these weird chords it makes me play weird chords and i love i love weird chords like so what's the amp we're playing taylor uh, some weird thing it's a <laughs> so that's a overdrive special from dumble that was made for larry carlton sometime uh, around the early 80s serial number 178 yeah that's why i was born in 78 so i thought it was kind of cool I picked this up uh, with Drew uh, from Carlos on consignment, Drew Berlin and Carlos Santana. And uh, we were um, we were in the car on the way home <laughs> and, and I was like, how much is he asking for for that? And it was, uh, you know, these, these are just a ridiculous amount of money. But um, for one, this special and rare, he didn't seem like he wanted, you know, uh, just a insane amount of money. And um, so I figured out a way to have it for a while <laughs> so I could record with it and uh, sort of learn, learn about them because you really you really learn more about these when you uh, have one. It's like I've played through so many dumbbells with Drew and uh, getting to know Alexander through Drew for a while before he you know, unfortunately passed away at the beginning of 2021. Uh, but we helped him move. I helped him move uh, from Shadow Hills up here, you know, a little north of LA. Over the years, I've gotten to play through just an obscene amount of Dumble amps, and you don't really get to appreciate them uh, on a serious level until you get to really have one, like in your own environment. You know, when you're just testing them out and trying in a different place with different guitars, you might not. I mean, they're. Don't get me wrong. You you, you <laughs> notice things. <laughs> you can't not. And uh, that's why I ended up with a few is just because I was like, I have to have some of these for a while, even if I can't hold on to them forever. Um, they're just so much fun and so cool. And they, and they just make, they inspire me. Um, and you know, the, these I also get a lot out of just plugging straight into them. Just a lot of off the rack stuff um, or, you know, things that there's just a lot of out there. They're kind of made for general purpose. Um, but these were, you know, this was made for Larry Carlton. This uh, baseman was dialed in, you know, he, Bill Finnegan actually is an, another friend of mine I got to know while I was in Boston. He, he mentioned something when I was talking about how long I'm taking to work on my album. He said something recently, he was, there's just no substitute for time. And that's what Dumble did. And it's not a way to make money, you know, to take a long time to build something. It's not a financially smart way to, to go about stuff. So Dumble was just kind of an exception to that because he just didn't care. <laughs> he just didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> and after I met him, I kind of understood more about that. And uh, he was a really nice guy, great, great person, but he, you didn't mess with his process. That was like just very sacred to him. And he, he cared a lot. And, and almost too much, maybe it was. Uh, he, everything else was just secondary. Oh, these are two incredible amps. This 178 just has an insane amount of clarity. Um, you guys might notice that the Overdrive Special logo is a little bit altered. Yeah, you can thank, 
thank Carlos for that. So Carlos had the amp for, for several years, I think uh, from 2018, he bought it from Drew in 2018. I have a picture of this amp with the with the logo intact. <laughs> it didn't stick around Drew's for more than a few days, I think, uh, when Drew had it. Um, Carlos bought it and he put a he put a Jesus sticker I believe on the now, classic now he has a picture the, the Jesus picture on his, on his amps that are on stage you can see, I saw it last time I was there and uh, but I guess when he peeled it off it, it took part of the logo with it which to me just kind of gives it <laughs> you know, it gives it kind of a cool story and character and um, it makes it noticeable you can definitely tell that it was on on stage at the Crossroads Festival 2023 with uh, Sonny Landreth borrowed it, um, Drew lined that up uh, for me to loan it to Sonny so he didn't have to travel with an amp. Yeah. And we get to use a good amp on stage that he liked. And um, so there's there's footage of him making it sound really good. Yeah. <laughs> I use it in a weird way, but he uh, he, he used it in, in a spectacular way. And there's, there's footage of that, um, which was really fun to watch you know, and see. So that was, that was, that was special. maybe me being not your typical Dumble, you know, user, um, you know, people like, you think about like people like Joe Bonamassa and, um, you know, people who play a little more straightforward rock and blues and stuff. And uh, for me, what what's cool and about this amp in particular as well is the clarity. And it's, it's a very, it really embodies what I've seen in most Dumbles, especially the 100 watt, uh, Overdrive Special, which is probably the most well-known Dumble amp, I guess. And, um, you know, it's the clarity and definition you get out of it. And, and you know, I use it for my, my stuff probably leans more in like the Radiohead war on drugs kind of stuff, you know, which isn't like it's maybe showy on guitar, but, you know, just stuff that's. Uh, I'm just kind of moody and weird but this thing is just just being so harmonically beautifully rich and clear and and so i i've really kind of secretly uh, enjoyed using these in a very different way that, but to find myself playing the way i do and then having access to these amps and seeing how it can work for that i mean like johnny greenwood one of my favorite guitar players he uses what what's that a, a fender like 80 or something yeah uh, those solid state fenders and and I, I I love his sound, um, and I've played through those and they're they're really cool. But like I still sound like me through them. Um, th this gives me kind of like a, a I like my voice through these a lot. I like stumbling into something that was kind of unique and and for for me to not use them in the same way but find a, a kind of off the path <laughs> or yeah. off the off the dumble path a little bit. And that was uh, what I was saying earlier when he, when he listen to my playing he seemed to really like the the chord voicings and stuff that i leaned towards like just kind of just it, not that it's even that weird but just uh just like just, just a lot of the open notes i use these, these things just ring out so well like, Just a lot of fun. So we know the amps are vintage, and what's this guitar you're playing? So this is a '54 Strat on loan from Drew. Um, I have a couple of vintage kind of refin Strats, a '64 and a '63, '64. But this uh, this is a really cool first year. Um, I think it's a later '54. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, mostly original. I think you know it's obviously got a five way switch in there. Um, it's got the original football small um switch tip in the case but it's uh i think it's in multiple pieces but it's it's there <laughs> apparently that's still worth something <laughs> even even in that condition um and it's been refretted um which does make it very easy to play really fun guitar it's got some great great pickups um see like <laughs> Again, I 
always play weird chords, but. Incredible amp. And what's cool about it, and what's cool about Taylor in general, is that he's not like our, I say our, as if it's everybody, our typical Dumble users that would use it for the overdrive, assuming also with no effects, most likely. But as you see Taylor's rocket ship, <laughs> he likes his effects, and it sounds really good through that amp. And you were saying that you showed Dumble one of your records. I was working on my first album at the time uh, when I was helping Alexander move, and he was he was a lot of fun to hang out with. I, I like it. we didn't get a lot done because um, he was just he was he was talking a lot, and and I I was just grateful to be there. It's not often you know kind of a special moment when it's happening, I yeah. think. And and I knew that this was special and he he was a special person and uh, I was I was just kind of like, Oh, I'm in I'm in, I'm in his house. This is so cool. I'm in, in his house. And you know, and, and because I came to him through Drew, he didn't greet me with like open arms, but he was less uh, little less apprehensive about bringing me in he was apprehensive but less so than, than, <laughs> than a flat out no no way he's just i don't know this guy he's not coming to my house he 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 asked me a few times about like do you play in a band you know what do you do and and i i was there to help him move so i tried to kind of just no yeah I'm, I, I just do my own thing I, I used to play in bands but now i just i i play all the instruments but i write and make my own stuff i used to produce other people and play anything they needed that I could try to do uh, with the help of Pro Tools. <laughs> so he was like, well, I'd love to hear some of your stuff. And, and I knew uh, that wasn't conductive to getting things packed. So I kind of put him off for a while. But eventually after we were done, I was getting ready to leave. One day he said, well, are you going to show me some of your album? And I kept saying it wasn't ready. And so I, I had some of it on like SoundCloud. And so we played it in his uh, music room, his living room really loud he cranked it up i remember it was almost being embarrassed because it wasn't like a finished mix and i, I hear all this god-awful stuff that i need to <laughs> fix and you know it's not until you're in front of people like that you know it's like when you're tweaking on your own you can kind of be like i'll fix that later but then when you're in that environment with someone like him who's <laughs> i was just like oh man he's gonna look at me and laugh or just try to be nice and be obvious that he didn't wasn't genuine but he was never he was never, <laughs> you knew if he didn't like something or was upset. Um, moving will bring that out in people, I've heard. But he he, he listened to it and he really, um, he said some nice stuff. He said a lot of, he goes, a lot of music I hear, it's like kind of an affront, you know, it's just coming at you. It's just really in your face because your stuff is more like an invitation. It draws you in. And the way he played, because he played in front of me a few times and played for me and he asked me to, uh, try out a few amps or he, he would say qualify if you wanted me to qualify, qualify. He'd, he'd, he'd wave his cane at me and say taylor i want you to qualify this amp for for slash i tried slash's amp he had a, a tweed amp that uh dumble was working on and he asked me to qualify it for slash and he grabbed his les paul that was in his uh, music room and uh, had me play through it which was kind of like wow you know i i I'm glad it caught me off guard because i didn't have time to really get nervous or, or feel kind of on the yeah, spot yeah. like i'm playing for dumble I didn't, and uh, so anyway, he, you know, that was cool, and um, he seemed to like the way I played, and, and he played in a very complex fashion. I don't know what I'm doing, but he would tell me the chords I was using. He'd be like, "Oh, I like how you lean towards these kind mm -hmm. of chords and these these tones, and you like to leave open strings ringing while you go up the fretboard, which is something I do a lot." But he he seemed to he really he really analyzed it, and and he even did, and, and I swear this was I knew this was all I was getting because I knew how much we had to do to get it moved and how long it usually took him to do anything um, amp wise um, uh, typically it's but he said he wanted to build me an amp he said uh, he said I'd, I'd like to build you an amp and I, I just I was really excited and honored like beyond words but I, I remember thinking like this is probably this moment is what I get this is <laughs> it. that will probably I, I knew better than to get excited for that to be a reality um, but to me the reality of having him say that to me um, you know, in person after, after listening to my music was, yeah, that was, I remember being like, enjoy this. This is, uh, this is, this is what you get. Yeah. So that was, that was super cool. And, uh, yeah, he, he, he really, he, I still, that's just a great memory. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah.